What's up guys, this is Quadrant. I'm bringing you another tutorial on the basics of flying your reaver and everything. Because I know the other version had some issues with uh, some jitteriness because of the streaming software I was using. So, this is going to be basically how, this is going to be a basic guide on how to get into flying an ESF, an Empire Specific Fighter, uh, meaning either a reaver, a scythe, or a mosquito. Um, some of the basic flight controls, uh, the re key remappings that I recommend, um, the basic controls, how I fly, how I recommend for you to fly, and then also two basic maneuvers that I think every pilot needs to learn uh, to be successful uh, in the game. So, uh, let's go ahead and start with some key remapping. Okay, so um, to go to the key remapping, just to go to the key remapping section, just hit escape and go to settings and go to key bindings. Uh, then you want to go to aircraft. Okay, so the two most important keys you're going to need to remap is pitch up and pitch down. Now you can remap these to whatever keys you want. It can be pitch up, pitch down on your uh, thumb button for your mouse wheel. That's totally fine. That's I know a lot of people do that. What I chose to do was remap my pitch up and pitch down to E and Q. And uh, so basically this means when I press E, my nose is going to go up into the sky. When I press Q, my nose is going to go down into the ground. Um, very, uh, just basically makes it so that you don't have to constantly slide your mouse like crazy when you're in the middle of dogfights. You can just press E or Q and then just use your mouse to do precision movements. Um, with that in mind, if you, if you do remap E, you're going to have to remap your exit vehicle key as well. So uh, you can't really, y basically E was your exit vehicle key. So I originally remapped this to G, but after replacing it on accident several times, moved it to J. And after pressing that several times, I realized I needed to move it even further. So I moved it to K, and that seems to be working pretty well. I don't accidentally jump out of my reaver anymore. So quite good. Uh, another button that you might want to remap is G, because um, that allows you to remap, uh, to roll right and left. Um, or at least to roll right, which allows you to do some crazier dogfighting maneuvers. Uh, if you wanted to do, for example, a corkscrew, you could press E and G at the same time and do this like this crazy corkscrew nonstop. But uh, anyway, so if you hear me saying press E or pitch up, I'm pressing E, that's what I'm doing. I'm pitching up or Q to pitch down. Um, so let's go to the general section. This is another area where you need to make some changes, um, or potentially anyway. Inverting vertical fly is really important if you're used to having, you know, when you when you pull back, you go up. So if you pull the mouse towards yourself, is your nose is going to go up. That's what you need for invert fry, or invert fry, <laughs> invert fly. <laughs> um, and if you push your mouse forward, it's going to make it go down. So uh, that's what inverted vertical fly. If not, you're going to have to just just mess with that and. And you might have to switch that up if you need to. Um, another, the other thing is flight vehicle sensitivity. I have mine uh, right at 67, but uh, this is going to depend on how sensitive your mouse is and all that stuff as well. So basically what you want for your vehicle sensitivity is uh, whatever's comfortable for when you're aiming at targets to be able to move your mouse up and down. If it's not responsive enough, you need to make some changes. If it's too responsive, uh, then you need to bring it down. So anyway, so that's the basic controls. That I recommend changing and upgrading. And now let's go ahead and hop in to the Reaver configuration panel. Um, you're by default, I'm just going to give you a really, really quick rundown on the Reaver anyway. And all of the ESFs themselves have a default cannon. They also have a Vortec cannon, which is basically a rotary cannon that's good against anti air, a little bit better against anti air than the default cannon. The default cannon is going to do a little bit more damage to ground targets like tanks and sunders and also have a larger magazine size which is going to give you an advantage when trying to take out down those slow moving uh, targets like a tank or a sunderer um, whereas the vortex rotor it gives you more burst potential allowing you to burst down aircraft when you have the opportunity uh, the reaver uh, and they all, all all three esfs have a third weapon as well besides these two basic ones they have uh, either the banshee the ppa for the scythe or the m30 for the reaver and they're basically all specialized in taking out infantry. The M30 is basically a shotgun. The PPA is like this orb shooter that can kill infantry really fast, but is not effective against uh, whatever it's called, uh, aircraft or against tanks. So, And the Banshee is not very good against aircraft or tanks either. So basically, they're all effective against infantry, except for the in the Reaver's case, it's also kind of good against tanks and other aircraft. So th the M30 is very versatile. That's what I usually run on my aircraft. Um, make sure you upgrade the magazine size if you go for that. And then I run external afterburner tanks. There's a number of different utilities you can go through uh, that you can get. Um, obviously, you want to upgrade your, pass, uh, your Reaver pass system. Uh, utility slot, IMAX, Scout Radar, and I use that most of the time. Occasionally I use decoy flares as well. 
Um, but either Scout Radar or Decoy Flares is usually what you want to go for. Don't go for Fire Suspiration System. Um, composite Armor, you can use this to basically reduce the chance of uh, or the damage that you get from Flak Fire. It is honestly, it might be worth it now, considering that uh, Vehicle Stealth increases the lock-on time by one second, and the lock-ons are so much harder to use now, so Composite Armor might actually be worth it. Um, and uh, I haven't really played around with it very much, but I just I, the reason I went with Vehicle Stealth is because I'm running Scout Radar, and if the Vehicle Stealth gives me an extra half, like an extra one, extra one second to get behind something before they give me a lock-on, on top of me, I think that's totally worth it. So, uh, if I was running flares, then maybe I would go with composite armor. Um, and then for my forward slot, I always use dogfighting airframe. And uh, the reason I run with dogfighting airframe is because it turn it increases your yaw turning, which is basically your straight horizontal rudder turning, by like 95%. It's literally that much of an improvement. So. Uh, hover stability airframe though can really help you doing reverse thrust maneuvers, uh, which I have, uh, which I will be explaining at the end of this video. Um, and then racer high speed airframe is a uh, basically gives you about, I think it's like 25 additional kilometers per hour. I haven't, I know that they they changed it. it used to be 40, and they kind of reduced it down to I think 25. But uh, and this can be good as well. Uh, but for my fighting style, dogfighting airframe is just by far the best because it allows me to do more precise aiming when going to ground targets and then more uh, m turn more quickly in dogfights, which I think is supremely important uh, above being able to do reverse thrust maneuver, which I can do just fine without hover stability, or racer high-speed airframe, uh, which allows me to run away faster or potentially catch up to targets. So that's kind of the advantages and disadvantages of each of these. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and hop in my reaver. Everything looks good. Um, there we go. I am on the Indar warp gate. So you're going to start out, and you're just going to be kind of gliding forward. So what you want to do right at the beginning, just press S to slow down. It's going to bring your throttle down. W is going to bring your throttle up. And then A and D is going to bring your rudder uh, left, right, and now uh, keep in mind that in the, when you're in the warp gate and you're in your reaver, you don't have to worry about crashing. Uh, even if you flip upside down, you don't blow up or anything unless you get out of your reaver. So, uh, and if you do get upside down like this, just press C. That'll bring your that'll make your reaver go up in the air because you're upside down, and then it'll uh, flip you. And then you can flip back over. So, let's go ahead and hop up into the air a little bit. I'm just gonna press space bar, get up into the air. So A and D make me turn left and right in my uh, when I'm in my reaver. You guys got this? So that's my, and notice how like, I turn much faster than most people do because I have dogfighting airframe level three. So it's literally like almost double the speed in terms of being able to turn around with that. So let me go ahead and press W. So I'm getting my speed up. Now I'm gonna rotate to the right and I'm just gonna press E. You can also use your mouse Pull your mouse back, but usually I just press E, okay? Now this is just a straight vertical roll turn, okay? You can flip it around, press E, go the other way. You can also press Q. Q will make you do a reverse turn, reverse roll turn. Now, uh, there's different advantages and disadvantages. Uh, keep in mind also that I'm pressing T to go into third person view. You, T toggles between third and first person view. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and come to a stop here. Let me talk to you for a second about combining roll turn. This is a roll turn. And this is a yaw turn, a rudder turn. Uh, and basically doing a full roll turn takes five seconds no matter what ESF you have so doing one of these takes it's almost exactly five seconds just a hair over five seconds now a way you can shave down your time and this is the one of the most important things to learn as a pilot this is like I consider it almost a maneuver because it's kind of complex but really important still is if you press E and then the add the rudder button notice how I'm doing a partial yaw turn now like I'm adding in the yaw, and it increases my turn radius by about, or my turn speed by about 0.3 seconds for a full rotation, which is about I think seven or eight percent overall. 
and that is enough to get an advantage on your opponent. I'm, I'm telling you, it really is. So, uh, learn to do yaw turns. You can do them either way. If you're going to the right, you press D. If you're going to the left, you press A. And, you're, and you kind of turn at this angle. So you want to learn to master those to be able to turn faster. That's something that I do all the time, just naturally now. Okay, so uh, the last thing that I think every pilot needs to know about is the reverse thrust maneuver, okay? Basically, the reverse thrust maneuver is al it allows you to go from a, a like you have to be going pretty slow. Your jump, your jets have to be pointing down. It allows you to go from one direction facing one direction. Let's say someone starts shooting me to the left, I can hit spacebar, turn this way, pitch down, and now I'm going backwards. Okay, and I can get shots at somebody. Now again, so I'm stationary. I'm going to do it to the right this time. Someone's coming at me from the right. I hit spacebar, turn left, and pitch down. And now I'm going backwards, and I can shoot at them. Okay. Now, if I add afterburner into this, which, by the way, is the shift button. Shift button is afterburner. If I add, if I add afterburner into this, so I'm going to hit spacebar this way. Should pitch down. Now I'm going backwards much, much faster. And I'll get lower to the ground so you can kind of see how fast I'm actually going here. Because it's a, you actually can go backwards really fast. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this. Do some afterburner. And now look at this. Like imagine how useful this is in a dogfight. I like seriously, you want to be able to learn to master reverse thrust maneuvers. If you want to become an advanced pilot, this is something everyone needs to learn. So now I'm just doing a reverse thrust. And you, again, you can just you if, once you get good, start that reverse thrust and then just get your nose gun on the on the opponent and just kind of glide backwards and just it's it's awesome. There's seriously not much better feeling than doing a reverse thrust maneuver and killing somebody. Okay, so that was the first real like kind of technical maneuver that I wanted to show you. The second one is a basic, uh, just a really basic dogfighting maneuver. And uh, it, it sometimes can seriously take a lot of skill to pull this maneuver, depending on where you're doing it and how you're doing it. But let's say I'm in a dogfight that I don't want to be out in the open. Let's say they have flak in the area, or they have like three mosquitoes or multiple enemies. Uh, this is called the reverse uh, thrust maneuver behind an object. I don't know, I don't have a technical name for it yet. But I'm just gonna kinda kinda fly through here. And uh, let's say I've got a guy on my tail. He's following me. He's shooting me over and over again. And uh, what I want to do is pull up behind a wall right after I go out of line of sight. So I'm just going to kind of fly back here, pull up. And then as he comes near, I'm going to go ahead and do a reverse thrust out and then blast his face as he con tries to continue following me. Because he, uh, it, let's say he's still like behind me. So in order to do this, you really have to uh, pop your afterburner. So like afterburner right here, he's still kind of on you, still has vision of you. I pop your afterburner again, pop your afterburner again, I come up and you could just stop, reverse afterburner out, blast his face. So uh, like that's a, a more advanced maneuver, but it's something that eventually I think uh, a lot of you can practice. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I had a lot of fun making it and I hope it helps you on your way to becoming a good ESF pilot. Uh, it, Flying an ESF is really rewarding. Understand that it's a very steep learning curve, but it's totally worth learning, and I uh, definitely recommend spending those hours in practice to become good. It's uh, it's really, really rewarding. So, anyway, guys, uh, peace out. Don't forget to subscribe for more Planet Side videos. I'm going to bring you all kinds of videos, though. In the future, I'm, I'm trying to branch out a little bit. Uh, if you only like Planet Side videos, feel free to only watch those, but uh, just watch the ones you like, and uh, always trying to provide good content, though. So, anyway, guys, peace out. I will catch you guys later.